Good morning, everyone. I'm here to talk to you today about how to achieve successful international business by using the Lewis model. How many of you have ever been insulted by a cross-cultural misunderstanding? <laughs> great. No, maybe not so great. I'm here to talk to you how to use the Lewis model and how to avoid the international having a cross-cultural misunderstanding. Because imagine having a business pitch and having a cross-cultural misunderstanding and potentially losing that client. We don't want that here at Fair Healthcare. So I want to talk to you about the Lewis model. What to expect in this presentation? I'm going to talk about the iceberg of culture. Then we move to the layers of culture, and then finally talk about the Lewis model and how to use it at Fair Healthcare. So the iceberg of culture. What we learn in school is mostly arts, food, fashion, and mass media and culture. But what we don't really go over is behaviors, communication patterns, uses of space and time, and values. And like an iceberg, that's the most important. What's beneath the surface is actually the most intense and emotional load and what I'm going to discuss and how to use the Lewis model to avoid the um, misunderstandings. So what are the layers of culture? What we have is inherited to us. It's common to humankind. But what makes us different from Germans and Swiss is our learned culture, which is national, regional, ethnic, ethnic and religious which then gives us a personal culture, which is inherited and learned. So how can we achieve cross-cultural competence? Yeah, the best way is by what Richard Lewis made, and that's the Lewis model. He broke it down into three sub-categories, sub which is linear active, multi-active, and reactive. So what is linear active? Linear active is like Americans. It's like Germans. It's like Swiss. We're very <coughs> cool, factual, and confident. We like to be very professional in the workspace. Our um, body language is very professional. It's just gonna be a handshake. There's no crazy movements, it's not very personal, there's no hugs. But that's very different from multi-actives. Multi-actives is like Spanish people. It's like Italians, they're very movement, they're very lively, talkative people. They're gonna use a lot of thumbs up, like what actually um, Jackie was talking about the other day. They have a smile factor. They wanna hear, like they wanna see your enthusiasm about their presentation. But then there's reactives. Reactives is like the Japanese culture. It's like the Japanese culture. They're very um, courteous and um, very respectful. They're going to show very limited body um, language. They're going to bow. They're going to listen to what you say. And this is most important for when we do business. <coughs> They're going to react to how you present your information. So then how do we put the model into practice? Fair Healthcare has companies all over the world. They have it in North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. So it's very important to understand how to use the Lewis model. Say, for instance, where we are um, generally located in Germany, we're going to need to understand linear active people. But when we do business in Spain and France, we're going to need to understand multi-active. But then the whole world, we need to understand how to use the Lewis model all over the place. So the best way to do this is to be prepared for our meetings, to be understanding of the Lewis model and how it applies to business around us. So I talked to you about the iceberg of culture. I moved to the layers of culture, and I ended with the Lewis model. So I'm open up to questions. Uh, how can you like practice putting this in use, and then uh, if anything happens, any mis uh, communication happens, you're not using the correct form. Like what can you do? To the best way is to have a big, like, have a good understanding of the Lewis model by understanding the different categories: linear, active, multi-active, and reactive. You'll probably not have the misunderstandings, but if it does happen, just apologize. And if, as long as you come, like, if you talk about the issue, they'll be more than willing to forgive you and go on. With the business. Um, besides just using the um, the triangle, the actual model. What do you think is the best way to research and prepare for a business meeting with someone of a different culture? Um, Richard Lewis has a blog called crosscultural.com, and there's a lot of interactive um, uh, website or uh, programs that you can use, and I'll talk you through each step. And I'll actually talk about the layers, the iceberg, <coughs> all of that. It's a great way to understand it. 